hi guys uh, welcome to my channel audio video me uh, today I'm gonna show you how to use uh, active crossover and external amplifiers uh, with your AVR in your home theater system setup uh, now the equipment I'm using is a LG monitor Toshiba blu-ray player uh, pioneer VSX 922k AVR uh, to drive my uh, mid-range uh, uh, frequencies I'm using a QSC GX5 amp uh, to drive my high frequencies I'm using a XLS202 amp and uh, to uh, drive my low frequencies I'm using a Cambridge Audio S80 active uh, subwoofer uh, now this uh, setup uh, can fall into uh, tri amping or three-way stereo uh, mode and uh, uh, the active crossover I'm using for this setup is uh, Behringer CX3400. Uh, uh, now uh, uh, I'm just using this equipment uh, for the sake of uh, demonstrating how triamping or uh, 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 how you can drive uh, your uh, low, mid and high frequencies using external amps and external uh, crossover. Uh, 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 the equipment, the amps I'm using, uh, they are not made for uh, uh, AVR or home theater use. Uh, they are just pro audio amps. Uh, but uh, if you decide to go with pro audio amps, uh, which are way better than uh, the conventional uh, home theater amps uh, then you have to uh, put these amps and all the setup uh, all the DSP loudspeaker management uh, system in a rack and place it uh, away from uh, where, where uh, you're gonna view or watch your uh, videos or listen to your audio uh, because uh, this equipment is loud okay and uh, next I'm gonna show you how to do the bow wiring and uh, uh, as uh, I'm gonna go with wiring I'm gonna explain uh, the different technologies involved and and uh, the setup involved okay uh, all right so uh, this is the uh, uh, backside of the equipment uh, to start with uh, uh, output HDMI output uh, from your blu-ray player goes into HDMI input of your choice uh, of your AVR receiver now I always select uh, uh, HDMI input uh, uh, through which I can select uh, different audio inputs uh, that means uh, if I uh, take a audio out uh, via Coixel Digital uh, uh, from my Blu-ray player and uh, connecting to Coixel in uh, on my uh, AVR uh, then I can assign uh, that port to my HDMI input or if I take uh, analog audio uh, phono RCA phono audio out from my Blu-ray into my AVR uh, uh, RCA input uh, assignable inputs then I just do that so I'm just gonna use this audio okay uh, I mentioned that this particular uh, setup falls in tri amping the main reason I mentioned it uh, just uh, to make uh, things uh, uh, simplified uh, this particular uh, setup uh, the instructions in this setup you can use it for tri amping uh, uh, now usually tri amping is done uh, if a, a one set of speaker uh, has got uh, tweeter mid-range uh, woofer and a, a, a subwoofer built in and uh, then you use three different amplifiers uh, to drive the upper high frequencies, mid-range frequencies and lower frequencies uh, but for this demonstration I'm using uh, two Tenoy Sensis C speakers and uh, I'm gonna use the external amp as I said so one of my QSC amps I'm gonna use it uh, to drive uh, the to drive uh, the mid-range uh, woofers uh, on on uh, to noise sensor C 
and uh, then I'm using uh, 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 Crown uh, XLS uh, 202 amp this one to drive the uh, uh, tweeters on both speakers and then uh, obviously for the uh, bass uh, for the low frequencies I'm using uh, an active uh, subwoofer uh, now uh, from uh, uh, it, it is essential that uh, your AVR uh, or your uh, video matrix and audio matrix device uh, has got a line level output uh, the main reason I said line level because you don't need any amplification or crossover uh, from your uh, uh, from your a AVR so you can't use these outputs to go into your active crossover you need a, a line level uh, output to go into your crossover and from crossover you distribute the sound uh, to its uh, destination uh, okay, so uh, I've already showed you how to connect the Blu-ray uh, player to the AVR and uh, now uh, we are going to take an output, uh, line level output from AVR and uh, uh, make connections on the active crossover and I've already mentioned uh, I'm using a Behringer CX uh, uh, 3400 active crossover that supports uh, two-way stereo, three-way stereo and uh, four-way mono so i'm going to use it in three-way stereo mode uh, which is uh, equivalent of uh, uh, tri-amping uh, for this demonstration uh, uh, guys uh, uh, also i want to mention one thing that uh, to make things simplify uh, for the home theater system setup uh, it's not necessary to use uh, this kind of equipment this is pro audio equipment uh, but uh, uh, for the sake of simplicity, if you want to uh, do this kind of setup in your home theater system, then uh, I would advise you to get a DBX drive rack loud management system uh, to use as your active crossover and uh, sound distribution uh, unit or EVDC1 uh, uh, system. Uh, if you haven't uh, got the budget uh, to afford that kind of device, then go for Behringer Ultra Drive Pro DCX 2496. It's a budget loud uh, speaker management uh, system and then it has got uh, loads of uh, features built in. Uh, okay, uh, so next I'm going to show you how to uh, do the wiring. So uh, to start with, uh, look for uh, a line level outputs. Uh, on on your AVR and uh, on my AVR it's just right here so I'm just gonna connect these two left and right output and uh, that's gonna go into input on my active crossover I'll show you okay uh, so uh, this is the uh, back uh, of the uh, active crossover and uh, as I said for this uh, uh, crossover I'm going to use it in uh, stereo uh, three-way mode uh, now there are some settings that uh, you need to consider if you're going to use this particular uh, crossover for your setup uh, to use it in three-way stereo mode here are the settings so these two uh, uh, buttons uh, they need to be pressed outwards so uh, so if I press them now they are inwards if I press them again uh, they are on the uh, outs outside settings uh, okay uh, the output line output from your AVR left and right goes into here are the XLR sides of the cable and uh, right uh, left side I'm gonna insert into channel uh, one on the active crossover and right side uh, I'm gonna uh, connect to channel two this side is channel one so left side left output from line output from AVR goes into input 
on active crossover and uh, right line level output from AVR goes into input on my channel 2. For both left and right channels I'm gonna take the high outputs and they're gonna go into my crown amp and both channels left and right mid outputs they're gonna go into my QSC amp and on my uh, channel 1 which is left channel the low the low output is going to go to my active subwoofer and uh, in order to sum uh, the low frequencies coming into right channel channel 2 to my left channel there is an option called low sum so here is the button and uh, I'm going to make sure that it's in uh, summed position so the summed is if it's if this button is pressed inwards then it's summed what that means is uh, the lower frequencies coming in uh, to the active crossover on this port uh, inside the circuitry they are then summed with the uh, low uh, output of your left channel or your channel one and then that goes into your uh, subwoofer active or passive uh, now for this demonstration obviously I'm just using one subwoofer that's why I'm summing it if I'm using two subwoofers then I would leave this uh, I'm not gonna use the low sum I'm just gonna use it as low sum unused position but I'm using one active subwoofer so I'm gonna use the sum position so if you're gonna use one act uh, subwoofer active or passive then and just sum it uh, one thing I want to mention if you are using uh, uh, one speaker unit uh, to drive uh, your high low uh, frequencies then you're gonna need three amplifiers to uh, do the uh, high frequencies mid frequencies and low frequencies on your one unit and uh, because I got an active subwoofer that has got its own amplification that's why I'm not using a third amplifier and uh, please watch my previous video which shows you how to bypass the active subwoofer active crossover in order to use the this active crossover okay so now the uh, high frequencies are gonna go to the QSC amp Okay, so now I'm going to connect the mid output ports uh, of my active crossover to my QSC amp because uh, uh, I want to drive the mid frequencies using the QSC amp. So on the left, uh, I'm using uh, female uh, balanced uh, XLR to TRS uh, jacks uh, and uh, left mid out from the crossover goes into channel 1 input on my QSC amp right channel 2 mid output from active crossover goes into channel 2 input on my QSC amp and uh, for uh, driving the high frequencies, I'm gonna use XLR cables. Let me locate where they are. Okay. So, so high output from active crossover goes into channel 1 input on my crown amp channel 2 right side high output goes into 
channel 2 input on my crown app okay so so far what I've done is I've taken the line outputs left and right that goes into left and right input on my active crossover and then to drive the higher frequencies I've taken left and right output goes into my crown amp to drive the mid range frequencies I've taken left and right output goes into my QSC amp and now I'm gonna take channel left channel left the channel one low output goes into my active subwoofer using a female XLR to male RCA phono so that's gonna go into the input of my subwoofer which I'll show you this right here so it's gonna go in input here okay so now next is uh, you're gonna take the uh, speaker outputs from the amps and then that's gonna go into the speakers so I'll just demonstrate one speaker and that applies uh, to the other speaker as well hope this is in focus as I said uh, watch my uh, previous uh, video uh, just to uh, see how uh, I've marked the cables for high and low frequencies and uh, I've explained about these speakers in my previous uh, video uh, so I'm now just gonna do the wiring to my speakers uh, so uh, the Tenoy Census C uh, it has got uh, two seven inch uh, woofers and uh, a tweeter so I'm gonna take the uh, mid-range uh, outputs from my QSC amp and uh, that's gonna go into uh, my uh, Tenoy speaker and the uh, high frequencies uh, from my uh, crown amp output is gonna go to input on my uh, uh, Tenoy Sensor C speaker. Uh, also watch my previous video in which I have mentioned how to match the uh, output impedance of your amp to the input impedance of your uh, speaker and how to make sure that your amp uh, it's powerful enough to drive your speakers okay so uh, next I'm gonna show you how to uh, uh, do the wiring between your amps and uh, your speakers uh, as I said for this demonstration I'm using uh, Tenoy Sensus C which has got uh, uh, two built-in uh, uh, woofers, 7 inch woofers and a tweeter uh, so as you can see this is bi-wireable uh, so uh, for the for driving the mid-range uh, through the woofers I'm gonna use the lower positive and lower negative terminals and to drive the high frequencies I'm gonna use the uh, positive and, uh, and negative high frequency terminals so to start with uh, from the QSC amp uh, which I'm using to drive my mid-range frequencies uh, channel 1 I'm using for my left side and channel 2 I'm using for my right side uh, in my system design uh, so uh, channel 1 uh, positive negative uh, mid-range frequencies output goes into low mid-range frequencies positive and negative input on the speaker and uh, channel 2 for my right side speaker uh, positive negative output uh, goes into uh, right speaker uh, a low mid uh, positive input and negative input uh, the crown XLS 202 amp I'm using to drive uh, the 
the tweeter, uh, the high frequencies of these speakers. Uh, so channel one I'm using for my left side speaker, channel two I'm using for my right side uh, speaker throughout the uh, chain. Uh, so high frequency neg negative, high frequency positive goes into high frequency uh, positive and high frequency negative on my Tenoy Sensei C input and uh, uh, channel 2 uh, high frequency uh, positive high frequency negative uh, goes into my right speaker uh, high frequency positive in and high frequency negative in uh, so uh, that's the wiring for driving the mid-range and high frequency through these speakers uh, and I've already showed you how to connect uh, uh, the active subwoofer and explained you if you want to use uh, passive subwoofers then you need a third amp uh, to drive the lower frequencies uh, but as my subwoofer has got a built-in amp uh, so I'm going to use that amp amplification to drive the lower frequencies uh, so in a way this falls in tri amplification region but as I said uh, uh, tri amplification is usually done uh, with in in home theater system it's usually done with speakers that has got uh, tweeter and uh, uh, mid range woofers and uh, lower uh, lower frequency subwoofers built in okay so next i'm going to i'm going to uh, demonstrate uh, by playing a blu ray and uh, uh, just gonna play around with different crossover frequencies and different channels and also gonna play a track just to show you guys the advantage of having uh, active crossover or uh, loud speaker management uh, uh, system uh, in your home theater setup okay guys now I'm playing the blu-ray uh, uh, just to uh, demonstrate uh, the low and high mid uh, crossover points on the active crossover. So as the Blu-ray is playing, uh, the Q QSC amp is delivering the mid frequencies. It's routing the mid frequencies, uh, or it's driving the mid frequencies of uh, uh, the speakers, and uh, the Crown amp is driving the high frequencies uh, of the Tenoy speakers, front, left, and right, and. Uh, uh, the low frequencies are driven by uh, active subwoofer built-in amplifier uh, but it's all controlled uh, via this active crossover so I decide from this front end of active crossover where to route what and stuff and at what point to do the crossover uh, okay so Let's start. The Blu-ray is playing. I'm just gonna increase the volume. So this is my mid-range increase, and this is my high-frequency increase. And I'm just gonna make sure that my subwoofer, active subwoofer, is switched on. Okay, it's switched on and. Okay, so um, for the low frequency uh, crossover point, uh, this is the knob and uh, I'm gonna set this to about 80 Hertz for my left channel and about 80 Hertz on my right channel. And the uh, second knob is for my mid and high frequencies uh, crossover point. I'm gonna set it at about 1 uh, K, 1 kilohertz on both the first knob is input input gain I'm just gonna leave it to nominal I'm not adding any delay so just gonna put this in the down position and uh, low output gain again nominal level and uh, mid output gain uh, on nominal level high output gain on nominal level and as I said on both channels I'm cutting off the low frequency at about 80 Hertz and the mid frequencies these knobs mid frequencies 
uh, for both channels at about one kilo hertz and uh, this amp is driving my mid frequencies and this amp is driving my high frequencies so I'm gonna cut off the mid frequencies now just to see what what impact it has on audio can you see now as I have cut the mid frequencies uh, it's like the audio is based on now high frequencies and low frequencies so all you can hear is high frequencies and the bass the low frequencies okay now I'm gonna cut the high frequencies now you can probably just hear the bass the low frequencies okay I'm gonna turn on high frequencies and I'm gonna cut the bass so now the bass is off and the mid frequencies they are off so all you can hear now is the higher frequencies uh, coming out of the tweeters of the speakers so I'm doing the higher and mid-range frequencies cut off point at about one kilohertz so what you can hear now is one kilohertz and above frequencies and humans they can hear between 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz so you are hearing basically above one kilohertz to uh, 20,000 hertz now okay I'm gonna add the bass back okay bass is back now I'm gonna cut off the high frequencies and I'm gonna bring back the low uh, mid-range frequencies so at the moment you're hearing one kilohertz uh, below up to 20 hertz so now I've cut on of the high frequency let me add high frequencies can you can you hear the difference like okay let me cut off high frequencies okay now you are only hearing one kilohertz and below frequencies okay let me add that's who called we just got to assume I'm watching the bank, right? I don't know. Come on. Can you clear that? Okay, point? guys. Uh, what does that mean? I said I don't know. Let me like let me play a track game. next. Okay, guys. Now I'm playing a track, and I'm gonna do the same. I'm gonna cut off the frequencies. Let the let the rhythm start. Let the track start. Okay. At the moment. All high, mid and low frequencies they are outputting through the speakers and the subwoofers. So let the music begin and then I'll start cutting off. Okay, so at the moment it's just... And I'm just leaving all the outputs from the active crossover and controlling the volume from the amps
the high frequencies all you can hear is mid frequencies and lower frequencies let me add the high frequencies okay let me cut off high frequencies again can you hear the difference okay let me add the high frequencies again Now let me cut the uh, mid frequencies. So it's just low frequencies and high frequencies at the moment. I've cut off the mid frequencies. Now let me cut off the. So it's only the high frequencies left now, and I've cut off the low frequencies. Let me add the mid frequencies. Okay, now there are no low frequencies. I've cut off the bass. It's just mid and high frequencies. Okay, I have cut off the mid frequencies. Let me add bass now. Okay, I have cut off the high frequencies and it's just the low frequencies. So at the moment what you can hear is 80 hertz and below. I believe my uh, subwoofer can output up until 40 hertz. So, or maybe 20 hertz. So basically what you're hearing at the moment is 20 hertz to 80 hertz of frequencies. Okay, let me add the high frequencies back. Okay. I've cut off high frequencies. Let me add the mid frequencies. Okay. Let me add high frequencies. And now let me add... Okay guys, uh, hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have any uh, questions, uh, then just uh, please leave a comment. And if you have liked this video, please click on the like icon and I'll keep making good AV informative videos. Thank you. Bye.